Hallelujah. Well, blessed Sunday, church family. We give God praise. We bless the name of the Lord. Um, as mentioned um, earlier in the week, I had said that um, this particular Sunday service will be a message online. Please uh, forgive us for any inconveniences. But um, there were some uh, pressing family matters that necessitated um, our absence at this time. But we give God glory that the Lord is still with us. And um, I am really excited today to at least uh, leave this message and believing that God himself, uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will speak into your heart, will, as he has spoken into my heart, and that he will do something in your life, uh, in the name of Jesus, with this word. So I pray that you open up your mind, you open up yourself, you open up your spirit to receive this uh, brief, exhortation i call it a, a, a short exhortation today uh from the lord um pertinent to know that we will be back uh in church tuesday evening going through the book of james we're in james chapter four and we are right in the middle of it and on thursday there will be prayer and uh, on uh, sunday of course we will have church service and we will be excited to be here and to to be in church and fellowshipping with god and glorifying glorifying jesus amen hallelujah well let's uh, our call to worship for today our call to worship for today is taken from the book of hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 and 18 Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 and 18 and it reads inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death that is the devil and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to to bondage for indeed he does not give aid to angels but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham therefore in all things he had to be made like his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make propitiation for the sins of the people for in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to aid those who are tempted. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word, the hearing of it, and the doing of it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Family, I want to remind you that this is the, the month of Zebulon. The month where we are dwelling with God, we are tabernacling with God, we are building our tent in, 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 in God, with God, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. You remember on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter, not knowing what he said, said, ah, this is a good place, let me build a tent for you, for Moses, for this and all that. We are building a wonderful tent, a wonderful relationship with our God. This month that we go deeper in our love with him. The Bible says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. So as we dwell this month intentionally, purposely, in the name of Jesus, Jehovah himself will, it will, will, will love us more, will guide us more, will strengthen us, will do a great work in our lives, in our families, in our children, in our church, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we, le, without much ado then, let's pray as we go into this uh, short exhortation uh, for today. 
And I am trusting God that he will bless us all with it. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we honor you tonight. We bless you. We honor you today. We glorify you and we magnify you. Receive praise in this place. Receive honor in this place. Lord, let your name be glorified tonight. Let your name be lifted as we pray, as we honor you, as we serve you, as we worship you, as we hear your word today. Holy Spirit, you take absolute control. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I yield myself to you. I submit my life into your hands. And I ask you to take absolute control, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It says, take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. Oh, well, when you're done, Lord, please take all the glory. I'll be satisfied just to see you glorified. So take the stage, Lord, Holy Spirit. Have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. And when you're done, Lord, please come and take all the glory. I'll be satisfied just to see you glorified. Hallelujah. It's all for you, Jesus, even right now, everything, whether it's convenient, whether it's not convenient, it's all for you, Lord Jesus. And we honor you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, family, I want to talk to us. We are in that Jesus series where we encounter Jesus. We're looking unto Jesus. We're beholding Jesus. So it's uh, we're looking at different dimensions, different aspects of our Lord Jesus Christ this month. Hallelujah. Last week we talked about Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday, today, and forever. I believe that that message was heaven sent. I believe that that message was, was from the throne of grace. And I'm trusting God that that message touched your heart and blessed you and, and brought some, some new grace into your life. In the name of Jesus. Well, today I want to talk uh, uh, today on uh, talking about Jesus, the human. Talking about Jesus, the human. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's take uh, one scripture. Let's read the scripture as we as we begin. Philippians chapter two, verses one to nine. Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 9. So it's a little lengthy, so I'm going to read it fast. Hallelujah. It says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out, not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider a robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Hallelujah. Amen. Talking about Jesus the human. Hmm. Hallelujah. It seems like we can understand having a Christ that is God. But we struggle with fully understanding that Christ Jesus is also fully man. Hmm. 
So it is a message that sometimes it's a bit confusing for many people. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23, we read that, But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. We preach Christ crucified. <laughs> we need to understand that this Christ was a human also. So it, 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 was, it was crucified. That proves that he was human. We need to know that he was a baby. He was a toddler. He lived in a family. And we also know from scriptures that he had at least four brothers and two sisters. At least. You know? He and James, one of his brothers, they probably teased each other. <laughs> They probably played on trees. They probably swam in the little rivers. They probably tried to pick uh, 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 fruits and different things in the wilderness. He and John the Baptist, he, Baptist, his cousin, they probably went hunting for locusts and honey. Jesus understands family relationships. Family. Jesus understands family relationships. In Mark chapter 3 and verse 21, Mark chapter 3 and verse 21, uh, you remember there was a story where he was preaching. Let's look at it. Mark chapter 3 and verse 21. And then we'll jump to uh, somewhere around verse 31 also. Mark chapter 3, verse 21. He says, but when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him. For they said, he is out of his mind. You see that? This, are his own, this is his own family. They, they said, this thing that he's doing, he's out of his mind. It's like we're trying to make sure we deliver the word of God, even for this Sunday and all that. People can say, if we are out of our mind. You know? So, so he had family dynamics. He, so he understood family relationship. Now, in that same chapter, look at verses 31 to 35. Let me show you something. Verses 31 and verse 35. Later down that place. Then his brothers and his mother, they came and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him. They were standing outside where he was preaching. They were standing outside. They would not come inside to join him, to support him, to listen to him. They felt like he was out of his mind. He's going crazy. You should be a carpenter. You should follow what daddy has left for you. Mm -hmm. And a multitude was sitting around him. And they said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them saying, hmm. Who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around in a circle at those who sat about him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother. Hallelujah. So Jesus understood totally family relationships. <laughs> he understands it. Let me use present tense. He understands it because he is alive forevermore. He is. Hallelujah. He understands bereavement. You remember Lazarus? You remember Lazarus? He was bereaved of Lazarus. He also he understands bereavement. He understands betrayal. <laughs> so many of his disciples betrayed him. If Judas betrayed him. He knows how to do business with people. Mm -hmm. Even with people that lied and cheated. He was a carpenter. He was a craftsman. He must have built chairs, made tables. He must have built different things for people. And people would want to cheat him. So he knows when, how you feel when you are being lied to and cheated. He knows. Jesus went through all of these things. I want us to remember that. That Jesus was also fully man. That he was here. He had a business. He had to run a business. He had to learn how to make profit and not cheat people. Hallelujah. So Jesus also knows that if you have a business, you are supposed to make profit. But not to cheat people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He, he, he paid taxes. Oh yeah, you remember. When they came to him and said, 
oh, why, why haven't you paid tax? You, you remember that story. Uh, yeah, he understands pain. <laughs> he understands pain a lot. Oh. In fact, he was tortured to death. They pulled his beard. They were pulling his beard. You, you try somebody pulling part of your, if you have facial hair, somebody pulling, yanking at it, you will know. Hallelujah. So, so it is still very hard to understand why God did things that way. Why he allowed Jesus to come that way. Our God knows that if he had to really know what it was, what it means to be a human, he had to become human for us. That's why. So God really wanted to know what, is, what are the challenges that you feel? What are the challenges that you go through? Not, not to stand as God, high and lofty and all that, and, and say, do this, do that, do this. But he wanted to really know what does it mean for you to be a human being. That's why he came. You can learn chemistry in the classroom. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes, but you cannot learn how to use the chemistry you learned in the classroom to do surgery in the classroom. You have to do surgery and then see exactly. You have to practice it. You have to be instructed. Hallelujah. You cannot learn how to fly a plane in a classroom. No, never. You must fly that plane. Hallelujah. You, it is hands-on experience. You have to watch and be there and do it. That is why Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 11, verse, verses 28 to 30, he said, Come to me, all you who labor and you are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I'm praying to, today in the name of Jesus that as we all come to Jesus, He will take off our heavy burdens in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. So it was important that the Christ take on human flesh, family, and partake of what you and I, what we go through, and to bring total redemption to us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 45, we read this. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. The first Adam, you know him, that one, he ate the fruit, he fell. But the last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, is a life-giving spirit. He gives life. He brings life. Hallelujah. I'm praying tonight, today in the name of Jesus, that Jehovah himself is bringing light into your life and light into your situation in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. So we are supposed to live as he lived because he's supposed to be our example, our forerunner. And the Bible wants us to know that Jesus also was human and he lived it. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, listen to this. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21, he says, For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us. Listen to that. Leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. You see that? He, he came. He lived that example as a human being. And he says, follow my example, follow my steps. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, we read it, we read it earlier. To start, in verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Have the kind of mind who did not think of himself as equal to God, but he became man. He made himself lowly. Let this mind be in you. Hallelujah. So we are reminded that we need to think of him not only as God, but as man. That he is also man. Don't forget that. He was fully God and fully man. Remember that people will always look at him maybe more readily as a de deity, deity, as God than man. I know. But what? He showed extreme humility. Have you ever met anyone that was born in a cow shed? I'm, I'm asking you a question. Brothers and sisters that are listening to this message. Have you? I have never. 
Somebody that in this world that we're living that he was born in a cow shed? No. <laughs> huh? But Jesus was born in a cow shed. Why? He wanted to show that he can go underneath us, go below us, go lower than what we suffer. Even me, as I had such an humble beginning, I was not born in a cow shed. My parents said I was born in a hospital in 1968, in a hospital. And my parents didn't have much money. But then you now imagine the parents of Jesus and Jesus in a cow shed. In a cow shed. If this is somebody that could choose to be born in a palace, but he chose to be born in a cow shed. In Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, listen to this. It says, but you, Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. It says, but you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from of old, from everlasting. You see that? Even though Bethlehem, that place where he was born, you are very little. Even from there, that's where somebody powerful will come from. Jesus had to be born as a man, family. He had to come in legally. He, he did not want to do it illegally. So just show up, just flow from heaven, mighty. I don't know. 50 foot tall, I don't know, whatever. Golden, shining, glorious, powerful, everything. No. He had to come in, he wanted to come in legally. He wanted to do everything legally. So you have to appreciate God's amazing wisdom. God is so wise. He is so smart. He's so intelligent. His ways are past finding out. Man cannot hold God and say, No, I caught you. No, I'm smarter than you. No way. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 reminds us that when, but when the fullness of time had come, when God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. I will say that again. Listen to it. Pay attention to it. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman. You see, legality, being legal. Make sure she, he was born of a woman, born under the law. I like that. <laughs> to redeem those who were under the law. Because he wanted to redeem us that were under the law. So he had to be born under the law. You see, God does not like to cheat anything. The, what amazing wisdom of God that we might receive the adoption as sons. In Romans eleven thirty three, 33. Ah, Paul talk, talk, talked about Jesus Christ, talked about the wisdom of God. He got to a place he couldn't, he exclaimed, he couldn't control himself. He said, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. And his ways past finding out. This is Romans 11.33. Hallelujah. Let me share this story with you. Think about this. If there is a mighty king, very wealthy king, very wealthy and all that. He was born into wealth. He grew up in wealth. When his parents were older and all that, he became the king and he was powerful, very rich. That's the life he's always known. But one day he decided um, he, he, he was going out and he was going out, going through his kingdom and all that. And as he was going out through his kingdom, he saw some beggars on the street. He saw these beggars on the street. He saw them looking hungry, haggard and everything. Ah! And he said, wow, what does this mean? And all that. And he went back to his palace and he took off his kingly robes. And he took off everything. And he did not take his royal scepter with him. And he did not take his credit cards with him. And he did not take any gold with him. And he became totally like a destitute, a total beggar. And he went and he sat among the beggars. 
and he was like them. And he, he scrounged for food like they scrounged for food. You no, know, when he was hungry, he didn't call his uh, prime minister and say, "Hey, you look, I've changed my mind. Bring me food here." No, when he was hungry, he, 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 there was no food. He starved. He lost weight. He became thin, scraggly, and everything. His beard came everywhere. He was not clean shaven. He, he, he did not shower. He was like a bad guy, like totally, completely. Huh? Then that king understands what it means to be a beggar. And I want to put it to you. That that's what Jesus Christ did for you and for me. I mean, Jesus could even have chosen to be born as a prince. He could have chosen to be born as a son of Pilate, as the son of Caesar, as the son of Herod. No. He didn't do that. <laughs> So you see, so this shows you his divine nature and yet his human nature. This means he is God and he's man. So he wanted to be like man. He wanted, he, he not just wanted to be, he became man. And this is the uniqueness of Jesus Christ. He was brought forth by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he had to be born as man to wash away our sins. If we wanted somebody, if we wanted a remission for our sins, he had to be as a man. Hallelujah. You remember in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4, it says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats can, could take away sins. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4, it says, It is not possible. It is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. You remember in, in, in Psalm 33, I believe, uh, where David said, ah, Blessed is the man whose sins are covered. That's all. That's all the, the, the blood of bulls and goats can do. They can only cover the sin. They cover it, but the sin is still there. He cannot remove it. But when somebody to remove the sin, it has to be human blood. <laughs> and it had to be the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not just anybody's blood. Otherwise, we will be sacrificing humans. God forbid. <sighs> Hallelujah. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. 1 John chapter 4 verses 2 to 3. And I, I keep reading some of these scriptures to you. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. So, excuse me, if somebody, a spirit does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, does not confess that Jesus Christ came as a man, is not of God. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8, listen to this. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Hmm. Though he was a son, Yet he learned obedience by some of those things, the things which he suffered. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 2, it tells us some of the things. Now we're looking at some of the things he suffered. Think about this with me. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 2, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. You see that? That's, that's, that's him suffering. In Isaiah chapter 50, verses 5 and 6, hmm, Isaiah chapter 50, verses 5 and 6. He says, The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. Ah, they were spitting on him. And he did not hide his face from it. He said, take it, spit on me, spit. 
is for Tolu. You can put your name there. They speak because I must pay the price for Tolu's sins, for your sins, for my sins. I must pay the price. I must pay the price. Pull my beer. Yeah, it's for my son. It's for my daughter. Pull. Hmm. So let's look at some few points on the characteristics, specific characteristics of Jesus Christ being human. Let's look at some features. I'll take maybe like five quick points like that. One is the genealogy. The genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a man, he had roots. You know, you can't just land here and appear now. You, none of us can say that. Now, some of us may not know our parents and all that, but we had parents. So, Jesus Christ also, he had roots. He was adopted by Joseph, the lineage of David. He was birthed by Mary, who's also from the lineage of David. Hallelujah. One of them was from the lineage, of, according to Solomon, and that's Joseph. And the other one is from the lineage of another son of David, Nathan. Mary was from that lineage. Amen. He was, by the way, remember, I have taught this. I preached a message that his blood was not commingled with Mary's. I have taught us that even in embryology, something we studied in medical school, in embryology, okay, the, 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 there's a barrier between the, the fetus, the newborn baby that is growing in the mother's womb, there's a barrier there between the, that child's blood system circulation and the mother's circulation. That barrier is called a placenta. That placenta does not allow the mother's blood to, to go into the baby's blood. Why? Because if it does, it can trigger off certain reactions that can kill the baby. And it's just the same thing. If it had gone into Jesus Christ, it can trigger off uh, the tendency for sin. <laughs> that is inherent in, in us. The sons of Adam. Of which Mary is one. Also, you know, I, I, allow me to share with us about this tremendous genealogy. Jesus Christ chose to be born in a poor place. In Bethlehem. Then he grew up in Nazareth. And even Nathaniel said, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Ah, man, Jesus is amazing. Why did he choose even a place where he's despised and mocked? Why? Because he wanted to really feel when you are despised, when you are mocked, when they be, uh, despise you because of your accent, because of your education, because of your skin color, because of your socioeconomic status, because of your looks, whatever it is. Jesus wants to feel Amen. In Matthew chapter 1, in that Matthew chapter 1, it talks along his genealogy, talks about some four women, special women. You see, usually, this was a patriarchal culture. It was, a, it was all about men. It was all about men. So usually you don't see women's names in genealogies. You never see. It. But in Jesus, they mentioned four. Not one, not two, not three, but four women. And uh, listen to this. Listen to this. Uh, even though it was a male-dominated culture, God made sure that these women were included in his genealogy prominently. Why? Because he's a friend of sinners. Whether you are a murderer, prostitute, you have racial tendencies, he's a friend of them all. Would you choose a country like Israel that was under subjugation, that was under slave, slavery, under the Roman Empire, you wouldn't. You would take actually the Roman Empire so that you can be big. None of us will. We will choose the best for ourselves. No, not our Lord Jesus Christ. Would you choose a carpenter's family and be called a bastard? In that genealogy, like I said, four women were mentioned. One of them 
apart from Eve. One of them is Tamar. Tamar was the daughter-in-law of Judah. Tamar had an, albeit unknown to Judah, but that's the fact, had an incestuous, incest, incestuous relationship with Judah and gave birth to twins, uh, Perez and uh, I forget the other guy's name. But that lineage of Perez is the one that is the important lineage that gave birth to David. Hmm? That's Tamar under that lineage. So it was from incest. God put it there. Why? Because Jesus wants to recognize, he wants to identify with sinners. He does not, he, he wants to show you that he is a human being like you and I. Amen? It, what about Rahab? That's uh, the next one that was mentioned. Ah, Rahab was the most popular prostitute in Jericho. She was the most celebrated prostitute. <laughs> Hallelujah. And yet Jesus said, I'm going to come from that. I'm going to come from that lineage. And then we go on to, to Ruth. You remember Ruth? Ruth was a Moabitess from the country of Moab. Hallelujah. And uh, there are some things about Moab. God said, don't let Moab enter into my tabernacle for 10 generations or something like that. Hmm? But apart from that, don't forget, Moab, Moab was a product of Another incestuous relationship between Lot and his daughter. Between Lot and his daughter. So, you see, and yet Ruth came from there. Mentioned in Matthew chapter 1. In the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then, what about Bathsheba? Ha, ha, ha. Bathsheba. Uh, the adulteress that David saw who was taking her bath. She's an adulteress. She, whether she wanted to or not, she committed adultery with David. So you see that Jesus Christ intentionally made sure, and it's not just that the, the Bible keeps quiet about it. The Bible now comes and puts it in its genealogy. Not that, okay, let's keep quiet. It's there. Okay, it's even there. No, no, no. The Bible makes sure that he puts those things in his genealogy. Oh, this is where this Jesus came from. To relate with us. I pray that somebody is getting excited. Somebody is being lifted that, ah, this Jesus loves me. This Jesus understands me. This Jesus has forgiven me. He cares about me. No matter what I've done, no matter where I've been, no matter the mistakes, this Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. Let's take a, a second point. Let me move on. Human limitations. He had some, what we call human limitations while he was here as man. For example, he had to grow. He didn't just appear as a 30-year-old Man, no, he had to grow in Luke chapter 2, verses 39 to 40. Luke chapter 2, verses 39 to 40 said, When they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in spirit. So he was weak in spirit and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. The child grew, he had to grow. Hallelujah. Luke 2.52. Luke 2.52 says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, even in height, and in favor with God and man. He, again, I'm telling you, he had human limitations. I had mentioned one of them earlier. In Luke chapter 4, verse 2, he tells us that, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward, he was hungry. He was hungry. Do you ever get hungry? So when you are crying, Lord, I don't have food. Those people in Sudan, Somalia, in different places, Yemen, that are starving. Jesus understands. Jesus understands. He was thirsty. John 19 and verse 28. On that cross, after hours of torture, being beaten and everything. Bible, he said, I thirst. I thirst. <laughs> He was fatigued. 
in John chapter 4, verse 6. In John chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from journey, from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. You see that? He was weary. He was tired from his journey. He, 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 he had deep emotions. He went through emotions. I'm showing you human, human characteristics, human characteristics of the Lord Jesus Christ. He went through emotions. In Luke 19, verse 41, don't forget that. And now as he drew near, he saw the city and he wept over that city. The, the, the actual language there is not just wept. This is real sobbing. <laughs> crying over that city that this city jerusalem you won't listen to me those are the emotions jesus went through in isaiah chapter 53 verses 3 to 5 he reads that he's despised and rejected by men <laughs> do have you felt despised before have you felt rejected by friends by people by family by people that you thought would support you have you felt rejected before a man of sorrows acquainted with grief is acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we did not esteem him have you felt like people did not esteem you they didn't even care about you they didn't give you honor jesus has gone through it surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by god and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Many of us, we like to complain. I didn't do it. Why are they punishing me? Jesus, this is Jesus. Taking all these things that he, did never, he never did for you and for me. In John eleven thirty five, 35, we are at the, the tomb of Lazarus. The Bible says, and Jesus wept. John chapter 2 verse 15 showed us where he had righteous anger. He made a whip of cords. He drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen. And he poured out the changers money and he overturned the tables. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next point. This is the third or fourth. Tempted. 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 He was tempted. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus can say, I was tempted in that area too. I was tempted to be angry. I was tempted to lust. I was tempted, tempted to take charge instead of allowing the Father to take charge. Mm -hmm. He could have made bread for himself many times that the Bible says he was hungry. That was that time, you remember, uh, early in the morning, he ran towards the fig tree, he saw the fig tree, he ran, maybe he will find something to eat on it. He was hungry, he didn't find. Why didn't he manufacture it? Why didn't he create it? That's temptation. He was tempted to do though, but he did not do it. You see, he could have made himself food. He could have raised his father his earthly father, Joseph, from the dead. Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever thought of that? He could have said, okay, Father Joseph, you died now. Rise up again. Let's continue. No, he didn't do that. Why didn't he do that? Have you ever thought of that? Because he wants to feel what it is to lose a loved one. So that when somebody loses a loved one and they cry to him, he can comfort them. He can comfort them. He can comfort them. Hallelujah. <sighs> As a carpenter, he never said, okay, let there be tables, and there are tables. No, he had to take the wood. He had to cut it. He had to shave it. He had to nail it. He had to build it. He did all this. He did all this. The next point passion suffering death that's what i title this one is passion is suffering is death the passion of jesus christ in hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14 it says how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living god you see that blood 
He, he offered it, that blood of Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, listen to this. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. In 1 Peter 2.21, I, I read this before. For this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. What about in Matthew 11, verses 1 to 11? When John the Baptist doubted him, you see, he, he said, but he, he said, are you the one or should we look for another? But what was his answer? Go and tell John these things. Look at all the things he did. The poor have the gospel preached to them. Huh? The lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and all these things. Hallelujah. And finally, my last point. He will return. As a man, he will return. As a man. As a man. He will return as a man, also as God, but also as a man. Do you know that even till today, he is as a man on the throne in heaven? Hallelujah. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 4, listen to this. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 4. It says, when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Are you going to appear with him in glory, brother and sister? I pray you will appear with him in glory. I pray you will appear with him in glory. And how can you make sure to apply? <coughs> Excuse me. And how will you make sure to uh, appear with him in glory? Uh, by giving your life genuinely to the Lord Jesus Christ. Not talking, not pretending, not pretending to live the life that you are not living, but truly, genuinely, and trust your life into his hand. Say, Lord Jesus, save me. Help me. Amen. Another scripture. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 11. Listen to this please family. Acts chapter 1 and verse 11. He also said, Men of Galilee. These are angels telling them. Men of Galilee. Why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus. Listen to that. I said he will come as man. This same Jesus. Who was taken up from you into heaven. Will so come in like manner. As you saw him go into heaven. Amen. He will come also in like manner. And one, one more scripture, one more scripture. You remember when Stephen was being attacked and he was going to be stoned. As a matter of fact, he was being uh, castigated. The Bible said he looked up into heaven. Let's see, in Acts chapter 7 and verse 55. And he says that, he said, But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, he looked into heaven and he saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He saw Jesus in heaven. This, that's a, one of the best, best tests, if there's any grammar like that. Example to show you that Jesus Christ is still like as a man. He saw Jesus. He saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. In heaven, he looked up into heaven. He saw the glory of God. Jesus standing at the right hand of God. You see? So he will return as man. You will see him. The whole world will see him. And he will come to give rewards to his children. And he will come to judge the world. May he not judge us in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So family, this is what I just want to share with you as a word of exhortation. I want to bring this so that you see this Jesus, that he, let him become more real. He's our friend. He understands what we're going through. He understands temptation. He understands challenges. He understands uh, 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 emotions. Emotions, your emotions, all those emotions. When you are sad, when you are happy, you understand them all. And so I want us to turn on to him in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that we continue to encounter him greatly in a wonderful dimension. 
Let's take that same scripture, Acts chapter 7 and verse 55. Let's take it as a, a use it as a point of prayer tonight. Let me read it one more time. But Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, you're going to pray, Lord, fill me. Let me be full of the Holy Spirit. Gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. You're going to pray, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill my life with the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I... Ah, as I gaze onto you, as I look unto you, let me see the glory of God. Let me see Jesus in, in every situation I'm in. Let me see your glory in everything I do. Let me see the goodness of the Lord in my home, in my family, in my children, in the church of God, in my finances, in my academics, in my health. Let me see the glory of God. Let me see Jesus in my situation. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's take that prayer. Let's take that prayer. Let's take that prayer. Masha katele bosha tikati zakata labash. Rakoto le brush kete yegede gede 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 Oh Lord Jesus, that I will see you. I will understand you. I will know you, O God. Father, continue to speak into my heart. Teach me. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Messiah, you are Messiah, 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 you are Messiah, 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 you are my He. he you are my healer. You are my healer, my healer, my healer. You are my healer, my healer, my healer. You are my Jesus. You are my Jesus. You are my Jesus. You are my Jesus. My Jesus. My Jesus. You are my Jesus. My Jesus, my Jesus, in Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Family, we love you. May the Lord continue to keep his face shining upon you all and bless you and guide you. I will see you very soon. God bless.